news. Let's start with this this morning. Not everybody is so grateful as they wake up on the 4th of July. Nat Natasha Cloud is a WNBA player. She tweeted this uh, over the last several days. She tweeted, our country is trash in so many ways. And instead of using our resources to make it better, we continue to oppress marginalized groups that we have targeted since the beginning of times. Black, brown communities, LGBTQ+, man, we are too powerful to still be attacking issues separate. Now, Natasha Cloud tweeted that, and I have to be honest with you both, my reaction to this wasn't outrage, it wasn't anger, it was truly just sadness. Mm. I don't often have that emotion as my initial reaction, but it is sadness. I, I, I know, Rachel, you and I hung out together for just a moment last night, we were on TV, and I was telling you a, a, a personal story about um, some people who have a very rough go of it in this country. Yes. And there are people who have very difficult circumstances in this country, but there are people in difficult circumstances in every corner of the globe. The real question is, do you define the United States of America by its hardest path or its most common path? And what really sets us apart is not what makes your life difficult, but what sets us apart here is what gives your life opportunity. It's truly unique. Yeah, it is true. And I, I also felt sadness. I felt sadness that she obviously has never learned much about this country, maybe even hasn't traveled inside of the country. Um, she certainly doesn't have an appreciation for the way we live compared to other people in the world and doesn't understand why, despite all of our flaws, uh, we have people clamoring to get into this country every single day. Um, risking their lives to do so, um, those who are doing it illegally. Um, here is Enes Kanter. He is an immigrant from Turkey, a, a country. And by the way, I just want to mention, one of the reasons I think I have that appreciation that this WNBA player lacks, one, I have a mother who is an immigrant herself, um, probably the most patriotic woman I know. And two, um, I have had the experience as a military brat of living abroad, including in Enes Kanter's um, original country of Turkey, where I did witness uh, what it was like to not live with the freedoms that we have here. Here's Ennis. Here's what he's had to say, former NBA player. He said, just ask your colleague, Brittany Griner, how trash America is. Calling America trash, huh? Let me know when your season is over. I'll buy you a ticket. We can go together to countries like China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, Venezuela, Cuba, or Turkey. People have no idea how lucky and blessed they are to be in a country like America. I'm not saying America is perfect, but trust me, you don't want to see the other side. Yeah, you know, I, I guess I'm glad that you all are so empathetic that you felt sad. I didn't feel sad. I couldn't help but laugh at the stupidity of everything she had to say. I went through and read all of her tweets. And first of all, I mean, I'm pretty sure she has a college education. It's just not relevant or evident in what she has to say. Um, she is. She doesn't speak from a point of fact. She speaks from a point of emotion and learned behavior. And that's the problem, is it's learned behavior, not experience. That's a great point. She, she even puts in her tweets that she was lucky and blessed with her upbringing. I, I don't remember exactly what she said, but she painted it like she probably came from a more middle-class family. And then, you know, when Ennis told her, hey, I'll take you to countries that, that aren't free, she wrote back, and don't hit me with the Russia and China. She goes, I'm blessed enough to travel. And then she, she goes, I know there are places, all kinds of countries that don't have, and then she lists these problems she says we have. The one thing she doesn't do is list any of those countries that are this utopia she paints. And that's what bothers me so much about it is, these kids, and she's a kid, she's probably 10, 15 years my junior, uh, these kids grow up with an expectation that does not exist in, in true humanity. Mm. The idea that we, that we all will treat each other uh, fairly and appropriately at all times, that, that's just not the human experience. The best we can hope for uh, is to have the opportunity to go make things happen for ourselves, to hold those accountable that treat us badly and to hope that people learn along the way not to treat others badly, to, to overcome whatever prejudice or bias they, they have out of ignorance. She has no grace within her, and I hate that, because without grace, you live a sad existence. And unfortunately, no matter how much money she makes, no matter how much celebrity she gets, no matter how comfortable her life continues to be, she'll never be able to appreciate it. And I guess from that point, it is kind of sad. For me, you know, that's the result of a, of a society who has fought so hard and worked so hard that we're raising our kids in a level of comfort now that comes without appreciation. Well, she's not alone. Um, look at this Gallup poll um, on you. It's tracking U.S. adults' pride in being American. So in 2021, we were at 43%, 2022, 38%. Well, we ticked up 1% 
in 2023. <laughs> um, we tackled this topic last night when I was filling in for Jesse Waters on his 7 o'clock show. And I interviewed Vivek Ramaswamy, and both of us came to the conclusion that the education system was at the heart of this. Here's what he had to say. When young people no longer learn the rights that they even have in this country, most young people couldn't really enumerate what they have Agreed. in the Bill of Rights now. Then when you take those rights away, they don't know what they've lost. Yeah. So this is actually part of the path, not just to a country that's no longer proud. It's the path to an authoritarian state, because what does an authoritarian state require? It requires a population that didn't know the rights that they actually enjoyed. Yeah. That's what history teaches us. Yeah. So the loss of freedom and the loss of national pride, they go together. That echoes what you said, Joey, which I think was very astute, which this is, um, this is not experienced behavior, it's learned behavior. Yes, 100%. Why we would do this as a country, why we would be so self-defeating um, when we actually know there are even national security implications to a new generation that doesn't love its country um, sufficiently, uh, it's, it's troubling, for sure. You know, sometimes you have to work twice as hard to raise spoiled kids to be good people. <laughs> That's very true. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.